All right, on this week's show, I'm going to be interviewing Lisa Feynman, uh, CPA in the Washington, D.C. metro area that's familiar with this wonderful $8,000 tax credit that we've all been hearing about but don't fully understand. Uh, so today I'm going to be interviewing Lisa, and she's going to be filling us in on the details of the 2009 home buyer tax credit. That's the $8,000 tax credit. She's also going to be reviewing the previous version, 2008, uh, tax credit as well and going into more detail on the overall process involved with getting that tax credit. Hopefully you'll find the show informative. Please feel free to contact me or Lisa directly if you have any questions about the broadcast and I look forward to hearing from you later. Enjoy the show. All right, Lisa, your first question uh, of the show is uh, just to explain a general overview of this wonderful tax credit that we've all been hearing about uh, that applies to first-time home buyers in 2009. Sure, yeah. Um, basically, in February, Congress signed the American Recovery and Reinvestment Act, which established a tax credit for qualified first-time home buyers who purchased a home between January 1, 2009 and December 1, 2009. And the tax credit is equal to the lower of 10% of the home's purchase price, or $8,000, but obviously in the D.C. market, most people are going to get to take advantage of the full $8,000. Right. Okay, that sounds awesome. And, and that's, that's different, as I understand, than the version that was uh, in the previous year. There was some sort of tax credit designed to uh, help first-time home buyers in 2008, as I recall, but that was quite a bit different, right? Right. It's very different because the 2009 tax credit doesn't have to be repaid, but the one in 2008, um, which was for eligible home purchases between April 8, 2008 and up to January 1, 2009, um, for those you got a $7,500 tax credit, but the difference is that, that $7,500 has to be paid back starting in 2010. So. It's essentially what it turns out to be is basically a 15-year interest-free loan. Okay. Well, personally, I'd prefer to have uh, to not have to pay it back. It's more of a grant than it is a loan. So that sounds better in 2009 than in 2008, right? Exactly. You're definitely better off in 2009. Okay. Now, are there any um, in the 2009 package? Now, for those buyers who are purchasing in the year 2009 before December 1st. Um, are there any uh, restrictions after they buy that they need to be aware of um, in terms of you know selling it at a certain time after they they purchase? Um, yes, if you purchase in two thousand and nine, you need to live in the home for at least three years. Okay. otherwise otherwise you have to pay back a portion of the credit. Um, now, same thing with the one in two thousand and eight. If you sell the home before the fifteen year repayment period, you'll have to repay the remaining balance upon or in the tax year that you settle. Okay. Okay, so the trick is to, uh, to stay in the property for at least three years um, in 2009, and then you don't have to pay back anything. Is that right? Definitely, yeah. And, I, okay. and you'll probably uh, second this, this opinion, but when you're buying a home, it should be for, you know, a home that you're interested in, that you're going to stay in for a while, but definitely if you're taking advantage of this credit, you want it to be something that you're going to be in for at least three years so that you don't have to worry about the repayment. Yeah, you're right, and I do agree with you. Uh, with the real estate market being the way that it is, it certainly is a little bit easier to sell a property uh, if you plan on living in it three years, um, not only for the tax benefits, and, and there are several others, but um, just in terms of equity gain, you're going to be in a much better equity position to sell after you live in it for a year. So I do agree with you. Now, uh, my next question, Lisa, is, is who qualifies? Uh, who does the, the government decide is a first-time home buyer? Who qualifies for this program? Basically, if, if you've never owned a home before, and when I say home, I mean principal residence, so you could have owned a rental property, but if you've never owned a principal residence before or you haven't owned a, a personal residence for the past three years, um, you qualify, other than I have to add the caveat that there are certain income limitations. For instance, if you file single and you make between seventy-five and 95000 the credit phases out. If you file married, 
to make between 150 and 170 thousand, the credit will phase out. Okay. okay. Gotcha. So the 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 full benefit of the eight thousand dollars is dependent upon a, a sales price that's higher than what is it roughly two two hundred thousand dollars, and um, and uh, an income that's uh, that's less than a certain threshold. The the numbers that you just provided us is that right? Yes. Yeah. Gotcha. Okay. And are there any forms that uh, the buyer should be aware of, or, or they, do they need to sign anything at, at the time they purchase? Uh, the real estate to be eligible for um, the, the credit? Basically, this credit is a tax credit, so it's related to your tax forms. Okay. So there's a specific tax form. It's Form 5405. Um, that's the form that you need to fill out. It's, it's a pretty simple form. You know, it just asks for basic things like the date of the purchase, and it, you know, will calculate your income. Um, but there's, there's several ways to file that form. For instance, um, if you've already filed your 2008 return, you can still file this form with 2008 and get the credit even if you bought the home in 2009. You just have to do so by filing an amended 2008 tax return. Okay. Uh, but you can also you also have the option to just wait until you file your 2009 tax return and file the form with the return. I know there is some other talk about, for instance, I think maybe earlier this week or the week before, they're even talking about expanding the credit to the $15,000 instead of $8,000. But again, that, that at this time is just in the legislative process. Nothing has been finalized on extending the, the, due, you know, the time that this is applicable, like extending it past December 1, 2009, or increasing the amount, as far as I know. Now, what, if anything, should first-time home buyers that want to purchase this year and, and receive this credit do um, to prepare themselves uh, for, for the credit, if anything, uh, before going out there and, and home shopping? You know, there's not really much that you need to do. I think, as we mentioned earlier, the general advice would be just to, to you know, you're, you're buying a home for a long-term purpose, so just to be smart in your decision-making process. And, yes, this credit is great, but don't rush into a situation that is going to you know, put you either in a financial disadvantage now or, or later. So my advice is pick a home that you're going to be happy with, you know, whether it's a condo, townhouse, single family home, but something that you're going to be happy with and you can stick with for at least the next three years. Okay, good. Good advice. I like that advice. Well, we're about done, Lisa. Is there anything else that you'd like to share with uh, our listeners before I let you go? Um, just... Just in general, keep in mind that uh, when you purchase a home, it's, it's a good idea to talk to your tax advisor about the home purchase because there will be additional things that can be deductible. For, for instance, points can be deductible. Mm -hmm. um, so if you're making, if it's a first-time purchase of a home, then your, any points you pay are fully deductible in that tax year. And even if you're refinancing, which now is a great time to refinance also, any points you pay with the refinance um, can be deducted on your tax returns over the course of the loan, over the life of the loan. Well, Lisa, I'll go ahead and let you go. I know that you're busy. I appreciate your time and you uh, explaining to all of us uh, the ins and outs of this credit. Um, I, for one, learned something today, so I hope everyone else has, and, and I appreciate your time. Thanks. I appreciate being on the show. All right, Lisa. Take care. All right. And with that, we're done. Hopefully you've enjoyed Lisa's presentation and my interview questions to her uh, and found the piece informative and helpful. Look for our next video. Uh, we're going to be posting one every week. Uh, the next video is going to be on construction loans, rehabilitation loans uh, under the FHA loan program uh, that are designed for buyers to roll in the costs of home improvements into their mortgages. Uh, those, pop, those are very popular loan programs right now. Uh, because of the distressed properties that are currently available, uh, including the bank-owned properties in short sales. So it should be informative and exciting. Hopefully uh, you'll get a chance to take a look at that next week. In the meantime, have a great time. Bye.